Crypto Caesar, Caesar Capital. Hope you are well. Um, it is the 16th of November. We're going to have a look at Bitcoin quickly, um, and then we're going to look at the altcoins quickly, and then we'll wrap it up. So here we go. So essentially, um, the bulls have two targets here, in my view. Okay. Uh, the first target comes from an inverse head and shoulders. Um, and the second car, uh, target comes from a um, falling wedge, okay, so uh, on a higher time frame. So we'll have a look at both of those, and then we'll move on to the altcoin. So this is Bitcoin uh, on the Coinbase chart, on the three-day Coinbase chart. And as you uh, know, if you follow my channel, Bitcoin has printed um, a legitimate um, inverse head and shoulders, and we can see uh, that here the left shoulder was printed on the 15th of June 22. The head was the four year cycle low in November 22. The right shoulder coming in on the 8th of March. As soon as Bitcoin broke above uh, the neckline of this head and shoulders, that was a confirmed breakout of the head and shoulders. And the target for that is simply measured from the neckline down to the head. So you take this measurement here, you stick it on top of the neckline, and then that gives you your measured move. Uh, the measured move um, is coming in uh, up here at around about 40K, 41K, which is kind of uh, confluent with the uh, 618 Fibonacci. So that's the first target, okay? Um, it seems that possibly this target is met because it's come up to the 618. It's kind of rejecting off it, but still things are looking pretty bullish at the moment, to be honest, because the market is sort of waiting uh, on tenterhooks for the uh, ETF news, whether it whether it's coming or whether it's not, but it seems to be just waiting for that. But technically, I suppose you could argue that um, it, it could well have met um, its target or got very close to it. So that's the first target. The second target uh, comes from uh, this big uh, falling wedge here, okay, on the weekly time frame. You can see this big wedge is created. And technically, the way you measure this is you measure from the or the widest part of the wedge. So, oh, hang on. So it would be from, let me just get the brush out. So it would be from here up to here. Okay, so that would be your measurement down. Okay, already done it for you, like Blue Peter. Um, here's what we made earlier. Um, so you basically take that measurement from the widest part of the wedge and then you place it on top of the breakout, okay? Um, and that's about there. So that takes us up to the 786, okay? Which is interesting because the, the, the measured move is confluent with the 786 Fibonacci. Uh, and that takes us into, takes us up to about 50K or so, 50, 52K or, or thereabouts, between 48 and 52K, that, that seems to be the move. So. You've got a measured move uh, of between 48 to 52K, which is confluent with the 786. Uh, and we've got a measured move, um, uh, which comes from this uh, inverse head and shoulders, which is confluent uh, with the Fibonacci 618. So those are the two uh, moves, okay? Not sure um, whether the, the 786 is going to be made straight away, but What's interesting is we have this massive area down here of 31K, okay? And this area was um, resistance for a significant period of time, about six months or so. So six months, six to seven months worth of resistance. We re rejected here, Bitcoin rejected here, uh, rejected again. Um, throughout the summer, it just rejected and rejected. It was only in October or October that Bitcoin decided that it wants, wanted to break through that. So this uh, area of 30 to 31K uh, was huge resistance for a long period of time. It was incidentally support uh, around here uh, back in 2021, but it became resistance uh, in 2023, okay? So the interesting thing is that, that the market usually likes to come back and test what used to be resistance to see uh, whether that is support. And I think there's going to be a lot of people uh, waiting around here to to take position. All those people who've been, who were waiting for 10K didn't get it. Then they waited for, you know, 20K didn't get it, waited for 25K didn't get it, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think there's going to be a lot of market participants um, 
sitting around uh, the area uh, of around 30 to 31k uh, waiting to take position because there's a lot of people on the sidelines at the moment you know so what i would say is, is this is that i don't know whether the 786 um is going to be met um before we have a pullback uh, but what i can say is this is that if Bitcoin decides to test this area of support of the 31 to 30K area, that for me personally would be a buying zone. That would be an opportunity at that point because um, it's very, very arguable that because it was such heavy resistance for such a long time, then it's going to be posed as a heavily defended area by the bulls. So put it this way, for me, any move back down to 30, 31K, 30K, I'm a buyer. OK, otherwise, I'll just wait it out and see what happens. Well in position, uh, we would, we took position uh, back in the four year cycle low. So we rode all this move all the way up, which is over 100 percent. So happy with that. Happy to ride this out. Uh, not going to get cocky uh, and try and, uh, and trade it and get chopped up. But if it comes down, test this area, I'm a buyer. If not, I'll let it run. Simple as that. And then we take it level by level. OK, so that's uh, where uh, Bitcoin is. Oh, as well, I should say to you, incidentally, that, um, like I said in my previous video, this is in relation to the 786. OK, so we're talking about this area up here, the 786, which is the second target for the bulls, the 50K target, which is the measured move from the falling wedge. Interestingly enough, if you go back in history, and I and I um, dealt with this in one of my previous videos, so I'll do it very quickly. If you go back in history, Bitcoin has always liked to reach out to the 786 prior to um, a Bitcoin halving. So if we go all the way back um, to, uh, let's put this um, on a weekly chart, so it's a bit easier to see. OK, so if we go all the way back to the first halving, you see Bitcoin rallied um, rallied out of the halving, um, as it always does, came up, uh, found its top and came back down. That was the bottom for um, that out of the first cycle or the first halving cycle. Uh, and then it ground up or it ground up to uh, the 786. And you can see the 786 here. And it came up nicely. In fact, it, it almost touched the 618, came back down, grinding, 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 came up to the 786. And then there was a bit of a sell off of probably, I'd say, about 20 percent or 38 oh, percent. So a nice little sell off there. Uh, but, but my point is this, is it came up and it reached for that 786 and it got the 786. And then there was this big, big sell off of um, 39 percent, in fact. So. Um, point is this, Bitcoin likes to reach the 786 prior to the halving. Here you see this is the next cycle, finds its low in uh, December 2018. Then it was a very quick rally um, then, I remember it very well, very quick rally up to the 786, met the 786, which was about 13.6, uh, and then uh, came down. Of course, we had the COVID low, et cetera. But the point is this, 786 prior to the halving, 786 prior to the halving so it'd be interesting to see whether bitcoin wants to reach out to the 786 prior to the halving my guess is that if it does reach out to the 786 prior to the halving that'll probably be a decent sell-off okay it could be let's measure that from about 48k down um hang on a minute let's, me being stupid let me try that again let's find the correct tool Please excuse me. So yeah, if so, if we had a sell off from the sort of 48K, 49, 50K mark back down uh, to uh, 31K or so, 37%. Interesting. Didn't ever think of that before. So we had the sell off um, back in 2016. Um, Bitcoin rallied to the 786 prior to the halving, sell off down 39.39%. Um, it was different uh, in um, 2020 because of the COVID low. And that was, I would say, um, a black swan event. Uh, but let's just take it down to here. Let's see how much it sold off. 
52% on that time. So interesting, right? So we're getting these big sell-offs. Reach out to the 786, big sell-off. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if Bitcoin does get to the 786 prior to the halving, but then there's a sell-off back down to 31K mark. I mean, that would be an amazing position trade, really, 37.95%. Uh, anyway, so that's Bitcoin. Um, it's quite interesting we're doing that uh, on the fly there i didn't realize that prior to doing this video um okay so let's let's take a look at uh, the uh altcoin market now this is quite interesting i'm going to go through um all of the altcoin um uh markets okay so i'm going to go through others which is the total market cap of all altcoins excluding uh the top 10 um or the top 150 excluding the top 10 then i'm going to look at total three and total two and we'll go through them step by step so this is an interesting chart and this is one that i um have talked about a lot it goes back fairly uh far it goes back to about march 2014 so we've got a fair bit of data here and what you can see in this chart is that basically uh, the altcoins seem to move with the rhythm of Bitcoin and the Bitcoin cycle and the, the halving cycle. And you can see here, right back in 2014, and make it a bit bigger so you can see it on the screen, um, we have this area of accumulation, then the Bitcoin halving happens. The Bitcoin halving is the vertical line in yellow. Uh, and then there's a breakout right at the halving, and then there's a big expansion phase, and then, uh, of course, a sell-off when it reaches its peak, back into ac accumulation, Bitcoin halving, then it rallies out. Now, back in um, 2019 and indeed 20, there was a deviation above this area. Now, this area um, was, of course, um, resistance okay and it came from this um low here where it was support it was it was basically the a it was the a b c move um of the altcoin market um uh, and this was the area of uh, support but then it became resistance because it fell down through it there was a deviation here above but then rejection another deviation then a rejection but that deviation there and the rejection was caused by the covid black swan event so it was quite arguable to be fair to say that in fact the altcoin market cap could have broken out at that stage rather than waiting for the halving but interesting to say the least so what we've got here is we've got um the uh altcoin market cap so others the top 150 cryptocurrencies minus the top 10 which takes out obviously stable coins right at the top of the range um and um looking to break out so it'll be quite interesting to see what happens here whether we're going to have a little deviation above and then back down into the range whether it's just going to be a breakout so this is quite interesting i mean my view is always um we would probably deviate above and come back into the range and wait until we get a little bit closer at least to the halving event but i could be wrong you know i could be wrong we could just have a, an early breakout for the altcoins but that's so that's the others chart, which is the top 150 cryptos minus the top 10. So let's look at um, total two. So total two is the total market cap excluding Bitcoin. Okay, so it um, it's everything but Bitcoin. So probably the top 150 cryptos minus Bitcoin, right at the top of the range again. Okay, uh, quickly going back in history, um, same kind of thing, you know. Uh, accumulation, halving event, expansion, bear market, accumulation, halving event, expansion. Okay, so the history kind of suggests to us uh, that previously there's always been an accumulation phase which lasted pretty much until the halving and then there was a breakout. Accumulation phase until the halving, then a breakout. But again, this is quite interesting here. We're at the top of the range. We're right, we're getting close to the top of the range. It's a little bit bigger this range, um, and the market's got to put on, um, you know, another forty billion in weight before it gets to the top of the range. But it's getting close to that, to that, to the top of that range. Okay, there was, if we look back in history, deviations above. There was a deviation here in June two thousand nineteen. Uh, no deviation previous to that. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. So others in total two 
are looking like they might be breaking out or at least deviating above the top of the channel. Uh, so let's look at total three. Total three is uh, similar. Now, total three is the total market clap cap. So probably the, the top 150 cryptos minus Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, this um, chart is suggesting that we're not quite there yet, but we're getting to the top of that range. So it's 416 billion. The top of the um, uh, the top of this range is about 460. So it's going to have to put on about 35 billion or so in weight before it gets to the top of that range. Uh, but again, it, 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 even though it's slightly lower than the others, it's not at the top of the range. It's getting close to the top of the range. There was a deviation back here um, in 2019. Uh, where it deviated above the range and a little deviation again uh, in February 20. Again, the, co the COVID low caused that or the sell-off of, of COVID. Uh, but So there have been deviations in the past and it come back into the range. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. I mean, um, if, if Bitcoin just pumps on the ETF news, um, it'll probably just leave all the altcoins behind and bleed them out on their Bitcoin pairs. And that might cause this either to remain stagnant um, or uh, maybe sell off a little bit. But so it'd be interesting to see to see what happens. But, you know, um, I think we've got to keep a close eye on these. Um, and anyone who was um, essentially uh, accumulating altcoins around about the, the end of September time, you know, this was the perfect time to accumulate around about the end of September, beginning of October, just here, 18th September to the 9th of October, perfect time to accumulate. And interestingly enough, that's when we dropped um, our 33-page research document on the top 10 altcoins we see um, moving or uh, performing this cycle. We dropped it on the 28th of September, which seems to be the perfect time, uh, our perfect timing for that. So keep an eye on that, okay? Um, really interesting really these are the, the charts you want to look at when it comes to altcoins um because uh they lend a lot of weight and favor to the trader and they allow you to give you some edge over what's happening in the market um so that's it guys that's it for this week if you want to join the group um come over uh to the website um, and drop me an email you can have a look around the website we've got the bitcoin halving countdown on the website you can look at the the different tiers of membership if you want to join the group you can look at the reviews we've got a blog on there um, loads of information what you can do so just come and check it out and if you want to join the group just send me an email or indeed just reach out to me on twitter either way is fine and we will get back to you within the hour okay guys that's it for today hope you're well thank you very much for listening please smash the like button please subscribe to the channel uh you know get get the uh get this channel going it's been a hard grind and we're trying to push uh you know sensible crypto investing on this channel not moon boy nonsense sensible stuff so smash the like button subscribe to the channel and i shall see you all soon thank you very much for listening take care bye bye